Americans appear to have spent the weekend doing what they always do on weekends, taking it seriously for a start. But only hours before the weekend, lawmakers scrambled to push a deal through to avoid a government shutdown. The fear of that seems to have done nothing to deter spirits or change plans or to disrupt anything coming up on the weekend. But how on earth does the US government shut down? How does any government just shut down? That seems a strange idea across uh, the rest of the world, clearly. The US government does indeed go into a shutdown every now and then, and no other government does in quite this way. Government uh, shutdowns in the US are becoming, well, not popular with the government certainly, but increasingly uh, more frequent. The procedural basis for this is clear enough. It is clear that a government needs money to carry out its many tasks and that money needs to be approved by the Congress before the fiscal year begins or before a particular project or a particular uh, budget item. And a shutdown comes when legislation that enables funding is not passed in time. Last minute scrambling often does manage to avoid a shutdown as it did in this instance. The Senate passed a stop gap bill just a few hours before the deadline and under that deal half of 12 funding bills would be advanced by March the 8th and the rest, it is hoped, on March the 22nd. Past that, there will be the question of money for Ukraine that the President wants to send quickly and that Ukraine is waiting for desperately. But many lawmakers, more Republican it appears than Democrats, want spending to be prioritized for sealing the US-Mexico border rather than for Ukraine. The last big shutdown came when Donald Trump was president and that was in 2018-2019 that was again over building new barriers on the Mexico border and that shutdown lasted 35 days. You had a 16-day shutdown in 2013 when Obama was president over his health care proposals. There was a 21-day shutdown in 95-96 when Clinton was president that was over spending cuts. And the government can and does often buy time temporarily through what are called continuing resolutions, but lawmakers can disagree on those two, which then leads to a shutdown. Shutdowns are peculiar to the US because parliamentary systems uh, do not permit this sort of thing. The ruling majority must pass a budget or the government itself would collapse through a loss of parliamentary majority. And other presidents, uh, such as Putin by way of an extreme example, uh, don't really have checks and balances upon their spending decisions in quite the American way. The essential services, of course, do stay open, keep running, and that includes, of course, defense. But there, too, on occasion, half of the civilian workforce has been axed and also dual status military personnel. Many of the cuts are seemingly minor on attendance services, but in the 2013 shutdown, more than 800,000 government employees were locked out of work. The reason that U.S. shutdowns don't bring worse consequences is that a great deal gets done through state budgets and a great deal in the U.S. is really set up through private institutions and run through private companies so that you can have a government shutdown in the U.S. And when it comes, a lot of people will not notice, not immediately anyway. But it is these approvals that keep the government and its ways going.